Hey, so this is part two of a three-part Q&A video. If you haven't seen part one, I will link it below. But we have so many questions that I am just going to dive right in. So here goes. Uh, what type of inductions and suggestions were used during your class training? This is a good question. Um, all kinds. I had the great fortune of being trained by Leslie McIntosh at Coastal Academy of Hypnotic Arts in Vancouver, BC. And I did a lot of research before deciding where I wanted to go to learn. And Leslie is absolutely one of the best. Hypnosis training could be a whole other video on its own. But essentially, the best things about Leslie and Coastal are that A, she knows her stuff inside out. The training is really comprehensive. And B, I was encouraged to hypnotize all kinds of people every day. And not just other students or guests of the school. The best hypnotherapists are the people that go out and work with all kinds of people with all kinds of issues right from the start. So when I was doing my training, I would walk into stores, office buildings, cafes. I would ask people off the street if they would like to have a hypnosis session with me. And I finished my training on a Friday and my office was open in Vancouver on the Monday. And on my opening day, I had my first three clients booked in. And in the early days, I took absolutely every kind of client I could because that's the best way to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are and what you like and what you don't like. And now, because of that, I can be more selective. So, yeah, that's good, really good. Next question. Movie and magician, rapid 10 to 20 second instant induction. Can an induction really work this fast? I also saw a street magician on a TV show once putting people out like lights with a flyer. He would hand them the flyer, they would look at it, and some would pass out on the spot. Some would stagger like they were really drunk and then pass out. What visuals or phrases could do this, if any? Not trying to sound doubting or suspicious, I'm just curious and would like to learn more. I just realized how silly this question is in a way, seeing that I watched your butterfly rapid induction and it worked on me. I'm just very interested and would like to learn more. This is not a silly question at all and you should maintain that suspicion. I would be willing to go all in on those scenarios being 100% fake. Especially the one where the street magician just hands somebody a flyer and they're apparently in hypnosis. I've seen those videos and videos where some guy will walk up to somebody and go to shake their hand and pull their arm really quickly and they're supposed to be in hypnosis. 100% garbage. The other ones that are completely ridiculous are the fetish videos. I've seen a few where it's always some super creepy revolting dude hypnotizing like a porn star looking chick and within 10 seconds she's humping his leg like a chihuahua on heat and orgasming while he stands there all foul and weird looking. That is not hypnosis. That is just really bad softcore porn. So it's gross. End rant. Okay, next question. What is the main difference between meditation and hypnosis? I've never really known, so if you know, that would be awesome. Intent. Intent is the difference. Similar experience and self-hypnosis is very similar to meditation. But it's all about intent. When you're going into hypnosis, the intent is to change something in your subconscious mind. You could also say that another difference is that hypnosis generally involves the guidance of another person, except of course with self-hypnosis, which is also very much like meditation. So yeah, next question. Is it possible to force someone into trance or do they need to be 100% willing to be hypnotized? Perhaps another way to ask this is if the subject's resistance can be broken down through induction or the like. It's not possible to force someone into hypnosis, but it is possible for some people to go into hypnosis without really realizing they're being hypnotized. So there are some churches, for example, or church leaders that have mastered this and have turned it into a very lucrative career. You'll find a lot of cult leaders would make really good hypnotists and a lot of cult members would make really great hypnosis subjects. Now, I want to be really clear because I just realised how that sounded. And of course, not all people who are quite suggestible with hypnosis would end up in cults. Obviously, that's not true. There are just a certain number of people who 
when presented with a charismatic person that they see to be in a position of authority would be very, I guess, susceptible to the suggestions of that person. But no, I couldn't just walk up to anyone and force them into hypnosis. That's just not going to happen. Next question. Last question for this video. Let's say in watching one of your videos, you've snapped, clapped, etc. and now are planting suggestions. Am I in trance if I can wake up by just no effort? This is a very good question and very tricky to answer. The only person who could really answer that is you. You could be in trance and strongly disagree with something I've said and that will bring you out, so to speak, or increase your conscious awareness. You could be in trance and hear a fire starting in the kitchen and that will bring you out. So simply the act of waking up, so to speak, doesn't mean you're not in trance. But I would think about why you decided to get up and stop listening. There's probably a reason for that. Okay, I'm going to wrap that one up here and I'm going to film part three of this Q&A series because you're asking so many wonderful questions. So I will see you in the next video.